Hello everybody, this is JD. I'm talking to you today because, just generally, I'm not talking about anything in particular, but today I went to the hospital and I had some blood work drawn. And Well, I had to go there because my doctor wanted it, though I have insurance. And we did talk about several things. I did mention that I ran for an election last time I'm running this time. And he asked me what I thought about this medical stuff that's going on. I told him, yes, the insurance companies need to be regulated. Some reason or another, capitalism in this country has changed from capitalism to greed. The truth is, what controls capitalism is the consumer. When the consumer thinks it's too expensive and don't buy it, then the prices. But as it comes down now, they think we're almost in a necessity to have, so they're going up like crazy in prices. So medical insurance needs to be regu regulated. And plus, as soon as you dog on stock getting sick, they drop you. These things need to be stopped. It needs to be regulated. But not at the federal government level. The federal government should put a mandate out that each state regulates the medical insurance within their states and put some strict guidelines for the states to follow. And let the states do the job they're supposed to. Not set up another federal bureaucracy but let the states utilize the state's legislation, utilize the state's government, maximize, not cost, not increase the size of the federal government, reduce the size of the federal government. Heck, someone told me today we have more czars in the United States than Russia ever had, the Soviet Union ever had, and I think we do. Also, we talked a little bit about, he asked me, well, what about the people who don't have insurance? That's why I say medical for all. Take some of the top fund, put clinics, open clinics to everybody. If you have insurance, you lay down your cards, you don't pay the deductible. If you're on Medicaid or Medicare, you go in, you don't pay the deductible. You just go straight in. That's going to save the government a lot of money because the hospitals are going to be more easily to control and regulate the prices than would be all these people who take advantage of Medicaid and Medicare. It's in the news. You know what I'm talking about. But there's an advantage, like today, to get my blood work, I had to go to the hospital to get my blood work. My doctor wrote out the prescription and then I had to go, two days. Whereas, if we have open clinics, a person can go to the clinic, they can actually write up there, take your blood work, oh, you need this blood work, got to go to the lab, you go to the lab, you get your blood work. Someone comes in with a child with a busted arm, you go to your doctor, she looks and says, oh, you got a busted arm. We got to have it x rayed. We got to go get it radiology and then we see about getting it set and everything. So you have to go to the hospital. They do to radio. Well, with the clinics at the hospital, you're already there. They say, that arm looks like it might be busted. You got to go to radiology. They send you up to radiology. They look, oh, you got a broken arm. You got to go and have it set and cast. And you're right there. They set it and they cast it. You get it taken care of. Now, what advantages does that have? Well, it's open up to everybody. People who don't have insurance, you have maybe a ten dollar twelve dollar co-payment okay and if they can't afford it you write them out a bill and they don't pay it if they can't afford it they pay you right there okay also another thing by it being at a hospital you have hospitals like we got down here children's hospital king daughters one of the world's best pediatric hospitals people have flown in from around the world for treatment there we can take our children to that hospital's clinic you got the best. Chesapeake has a cancer clinic. One of the best cancer clinics in the whole world. People can go there to the open clinic and then start their cancer programs there. See, there is an advantage by putting medical for all and putting clinics at every hospital. So, what do we think we should do? Should we spend billions of dollars trying to regulate the insurance company? and try to set up an insurance program? No. Let's put medical for all. Set up clinics that anybody and everybody can go to. Then we talked a little bit about the deficit in taxes. The in our present taxation system will never pay the debt we are running up right now. We need to get rid of that and get into a sales tax society. Everybody pays taxes. Nobody gets out of it. Yep, that's what a sales tax does. So that means those illegal aliens that are in this country that are getting all these benefits, they're not going to get them free because they're going to be paying sales tax. And it's time for the rich people to put their money where their mouth is. They keep saying they need to pay more. Well, go ahead. What we do is we have a standard tax and then a luxury tax. What happens is, let's say you buy a home, 
125,000 or less, there's no tax on it. From 25,000 to a million, there's a standard tax. Over a million, besides the standard tax, you add a luxury tax. You buy a car, let's say 10,000 or less, there's no tax. 10,000 to 50,000, a standard tax. Over 50,000, you pay the standard tax plus a luxury tax. See what I'm saying? Everybody will pay taxes. The illegal alien, who's using a lot of the benefits from all the states and all the federal government, they would be paying taxes too, because every time they buy something. The disadvantage to the illegal alien will be that because he's not registered as an American or alien in this country, the rebate that every month the federal government sends out, he won't get. So he will be penalized for being in this country by not getting that fifteen, fourteen hundred dollar monthly rebate from the federal government. Whereas the illegal alien will have to forfeit that or notify the federal government where they're at and then they will have to, you know, arrest them. <laughs> so you see the sales tax has its advantages. It justifies and legalizes everything. Now, what else did we talk about? We talked a little bit about the last election. He said nothing really great come out of the last election. I said, no, that's wrong. By electing an Afro-American, that is what is great. And then we talked a little bit about other things and about leadership and what a leader needs to be. He needs to be strong. He needs to be able to stand up. He needs to care for the individual. We talked a little bit about the Soviet Union and how they choose their presidential candidates. Do you know how the Soviet Union did it? Well, first you had to be a Communist Party member, a party person. Then what happened is that your areas would select a person that you wanted to run for president in the general election. Once the parties have selected the individuals, then they'll go to the National Convention. And there, the individual was selected by the National Convention. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And then the party whoever they selected to run, it might be two or three people, would then run in the general election. Does that sound familiar? With the help of our national news, we were able to do exactly the same thing. We did exactly what the Soviet Union did. The Democrats had their national convention in each state. The Democrats voted for who they wanted. The Republicans in each state voted for who they wanted. Then they went to the National Convention, and there the Democrats picked who they wanted for president, and the Republicans picked who they wanted. Both of them picked very bad choices, but that's who they picked. And who did we get to vote in the general election for? Well, thanks to the help of the news, which didn't cover anybody else that was running, we had the Democrat Party pick and the Republican Party pick. In other words, exactly like the Soviet Union. That needs to be changed. We need to get somebody who is not a party person to start running so people realize there's others out there that can and should be considered. And you people need to go out there and look for these candidates. Don't let the news tell you everything. Hunt out. Look for the truth. Because there may be somebody out there that's much better than what the Republican Party picked or the Democrat Party picked. Personally, I feel both parties had much better candidates than the two they picked. But they picked who they picked, and that's who you got to vote for, just like the Soviet Union. So think about these things I talked about. What kind of leader do you want? Do you want an individual who's weak? Do you want an individual that's going to lean towards these parties? Or do you want an individual that you is what matters to them? And they're strong, and they can stand up and let you be counted. This is J.D. Think about that. Don't vote Republican. Don't vote Democrat. Search out. Look for the truth. Look for the people. Check me out. I have a lot to offer. And am I strong enough to be a strong leader? Hey, you'd be surprised how strong I can actually be. This is J.D. saying, vote American. Look for the truth and go from there. Thank you. Have a nice day.